Welcome back guys. In this tutorial, we'll be talking about hexose monophosphate shunt. This is a very interesting uh, biochemical set of pathways because this pathway actually uh, shift between the different carbon compounds. Because you know, uh, whenever we talk about uh, carbon chemistry, I mean carbohydrate chemistry, it is majorly based on the number of carbons. For example, glucose is a six carbon molecule. I uh, you know ribulose is a five carbon molecule, xylulose is a five carbon molecule, you know, uh, then glyceraldehyde, I mean, all these things, there are three carbon molecules, five carbon molecules, seven carbon molecules, and all of them are uh, carbohydrates. So actually using this hexose monophosphate shunt inside the cell, they are, sh they can be, they can easily shift from a five carbon molecule to a six carbon molecule, from a c three carbon to a seven carbon or three to five carbon. So it actually gives the cell so much uh, of room to transfer the number of carbons and actually produce different variety of carbohydrates inside the cell. So uh, for the beginning, let's start with uh, glucose six phosphate because that's, that's actually in all this hexose monophosphate shunt, there are majorly two different type of phases present there. So two phase pathway, it's a two phase pathway. One is called the oxidative phase, that is the first phase and second phase, so first phase is the oxidative, oxidative phase and second phase is the, you know, second phase is a non-oxidative phase. So let's talk about the oxidative phase at the beginning. So if we begin with glucose 6-phosphate, say glucose 6-phosphate, you start with glucose 6-phosphate. Now glucose 6-phosphate is converted into ribulose 5-phosphate, ribulose 5-phosphate. And this number uh, that is present in between is telling us the number of carbon that is present in that carbohydrate. Now in glucose there are 6 carbons, that's why glucose 6-phosphate. In ribulose there are 5 carbons, that's why ribulose 5-phosphate, right? So we produce ribulose 5-phosphate from glucose 6-phosphate and this process requires the presence of NADP because in this case, so they require 2 NADP and they convert this, they actually reduce this NADP into NADPH. Reduction of NADP occurs as a result glucose 6-phosphate is converted into ribulose 5-phosphate there and one carbon molecule is released outside. In, in any form like carbon dioxide or something. Now once the ribulose 5-phosphate is produced, this ribulose 5-phosphate is a very versatile element because we can actually uh, change or convert it into many different varieties of 5-carbon. For example, we can change this ribulose 5-phosphate into ribose 5-phosphate, they can produce xylulose 5-phosphate from there, all of them, you know, whatever uh, type of phosphate or molecules they produce. Let's say they can produce ribose 5-phosphate, you know, ribose sugar that is uh, necessary for creating the backbone of the DNA or they can produce xyl xylulose 5-phosphate. All of them are 5-carbon molecules, just simple rearrangement uh, in the carbon uh, backbone and they change their structure into different types of carbohydrates. So they can produce these things over there. So whatever things they produce, up till that part is termed as the oxidative phase or the first phase of this hexose monophosphate shunt. Now once they produce them, after that they start converting those 5 carbon structures because you know ribose 5-phosphate have 5 carbon, xylulose 5-phosphate has also 5 carbon. So let's, let's mark it, this is a 5 carbon molecule, this is also a 5 carbon molecule. I mean 5 carbon. So, so ultimately if they react those two things together, we get 10 carbons, right? Now by involving those 10 carbons, what they can produce is a 7 carbon molecule that is called sedoheptulose, sedoheptulose 7 phosphate, right? And they also produce ribose, you know, they also produce glycerol dehyde, I mean gap, that is a 3 carbon molecule, right? So they can produce these things because you know, if, if we calculate the carbon number, this is a 3 carbon molecule, this is a 7 carbon molecule. So ultimately they started the journey with complete of 10 carbon. Now the distribution will vary, that's why I love this pathway 
because this pathway is all about rearranging the number of carbons and producing different num carbon containing uh, carbohydrates. For example, they begin with 2, 5 carbon molecules, ultimately 10 carbons, distribute that in such a way so that they can produce a 3 carbon molecule which is gap here, right, glyceraldehyde phosphate and they can also produce 7 carbon molecule which is sedoheptulose 7 phosphate, right. Then again they can use it, they can use this again and what they can do here, again 7 carbon and 3 carbon comprises of, uh, you know, comprises of 10 carbons and again they can produce using those 10 carbons they can produce a 6 carbon molecule and a 4 carbon molecule they can produce fructose 6 phosphate fructose 6 phosphate they can produce it right it's a 6 carbon molecule 6 carbon molecule they can also produce erythrose sorry for extremely bad handwriting there, erythrose 4 phosphate. Erythrose 4 phosphate on the other hand is a 4 carbon molecule. So, you can see the ultimate number of carbons always remains 10, but the rearrangement is varied. 10 in the previous case start with 2, 5 carbon molecules. It can be arranged like 1, 3 carbon, 1, 7 carbon. It can be arranged like 1, 6 carbon, 1, 4 carbon right and as they arrange these carbon numbers different way they produce different types of carbohydrates and that gives the cell so much room to use those carbohydrates in different functionality right for example this erythrose 4 phosphate can be taken and the xylulose 5 phosphate that is previously produced they can choose those two those two things so let's go back somewhere here and they can use this xylulose and erythrose together so you have xylulose 5 phosphate and erythrose 4 phosphate so ultimately the total number of carbons here are 9 carbons remember 4 carbon and 5 carbon so total 9 carbon they can use those two things they can use those two things and they can rearrange them to produce fructose 6 phosphate which is a remember 6 carbon molecule and glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. Glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate means it is a 3-carbon molecule, right. So, ultimately that 9-carbon can al already be distributed into a 6-carbon and a 3-carbon, right. So, it ultimately gives a 9-carbon. So, ultimately the total number of carbon remains constant, but they can vary the different types of carbohydrates by changing the position of uh, the phosphate and changing the position of, uh, changing the number of carbons in that carbohydrate. And that gives the total idea because you know up to that point of production of 5 carbon molecule is the oxidative phase. Right after that the other phases are non-oxidative phase right or phase 2. So, whatever process or whatever phase we have seen here after this blue line here after this, this line right is non-oxidative phase and this is called the phase number 2 of hexose monophosphate shunt and this process is also termed as pentose phosphate pathway right so that's kind of it guys and i hope that's helpful thank you